Hi, I'm Dana Brown. I work for Zojo. And in this lesson, we're going to put into practice some of the concepts we've been learning in these videos. For that, we're going to start designing an application that's in charge of managing our personal finances. So let's just start designing the user interface of the app, starting with a couple of labels from the library that we're going to use as an indication of the expected input from the user from their respected text fields in order to type an item name and the associated expense amount. For example, the first of these labels would be item while the second label would be total. Next, we're going to add a couple of text fields to our user interface. applying some settings on them as we've seen in previous videos. So their size varies to adjust from one of the containing windows when the user changes its size and also giving, giving a more descriptive name to the control itself so we can better know from code what it's intended for. Next, we're going to add a button that we're going to use to add every new expense entry. We will set the alignment property to right for the total text field. And let's also add a list box control where we will add the item text and the typed amount from the total field. We set the list box so it offers a total of two columns, also to display column headers, and we'll set its initial values, being the ones we will use for the column headers, item, and total, using the tab character as a separator to split these. So once we confirm the changes, you can see how these are applied to the list box in the layout editor. To finish our layout, let's add a couple more labels in charge of displaying the grand total for our expenses and the associated text, grand total, and the associated numeric value. Once we finish our user interface, let's put its functionality in the Add button. For that, you already know how to add a new event handler to a UI control. So in this case, the Action Event Handler. And the first thing we're going to do is add the new item just when there is some text type both from, for the item text field and the expense amount text field. So we need to use one of the conditionals we saw in a previous lesson. So here, if the value from item field is not equal to, notice the non-equality operator, to an empty string, that means the user has typed nothing in the text field. And the value from item field is not equal to an empty string. then that would mean that the user types some values inside of those text fields. 
and then we will be able to process them. Let's declare a new double variable. Assigning to it the content from the total field. Converted to a double value. Next, we declare a second variable named total, also as a double type, and that will be in charge of adding every new value to the existing accumulated total. So we get the value from total label converted to a double integer, and we'll add to this the current value stored in the A variable. Next, let's set the value of the total label label so it reflects the new grand total. So we type total label value equals to total, but probably we would want to apply some kind of format to this numeric value. So it displays, for example, the thousands and the decimal separator set by the user on the international preferences for the operating system. And for that, we will be using the format function. If we look at the lower area of the code editor, we can see how this function expects as input a double value and also a string whose characters will set the way we want to format the value. Of course, as usual, we can read the documentation for the format function. So we can see in more detail what characters we can use for the formatting of the string and the meaning of every one of these. As, for example, the sharp character to set a digit placeholder if there is one available for that position, or the dot character to set the position of the decimal point, or the comma as the thousand separator, among many other available options. Here, we're interested in a total of six digit positions, and two decimal positions, using for that two zeros, so it means that a zero will be placed if such a position is not going to be covered by the value. Lastly, we will simply add the item text and expense value as a new row to the list box, using for that the add row method on the list box, as we remember from previous videos. So we only need to pass along the item field dot value and also total field dot value. Now, once we added the new entry to the list box, we will delete the current contents from both text fields so the user can type new values in a more convenient way. So we only need to assign an empty string to item field, and the same thing with the total field dot value. And lastly, we're going to set the input focus on the first text field, so it's ready to receive the typing from the user of our app. For this, we will use the setFocus method. Once again, we can refer to the associated documentation for the method so we can better understand what it does when it's called from the control. Let's add the then keyword. And if we run our app to test it, Let's type chair, for example, as the item value, $1,200.20 as the amount value. We click on the Add button, and you can see how the new entry has been added as a new row to the list box, while the grand total has been updated, displaying the accumulated value. Let's now type table as the item value and $300.50 as the expense value. And as expected, the list box adds a new entry and the grand total is updated to reflect the new value. We type food and $200.35, and it behaves as expected. One thing about the list box is that if you click on a column header, 
then all the rows will be sorting in ascending or descending order. And the same is in the case of the numbers. While these by default will be sorted as string values and not as numbers, something we'll see how to fix in a more advanced lesson. In addition, we need to fix our format string, so it includes the thousand separator. Something as easy as adding the comma character in the right place of the format string. So now we have the wires of our personal expenses app and whose functionality will be increasing as we see in more advanced topics. The next one will be functions, data collections, and also the learning of the classes and properties as a fundamental topic of object-oriented programming. So thanks for watching and I expect to see you on the next video. Meanwhile, I invite you to practice writing your own simple apps and why not even, even adding your own touches to this one.